the Rolling Stones, and that is a flashback to late 1963. It's six minutes, six before eight o'clock in news time. Well, as far as I'm concerned, 6 a.m. is about the worst time of the day. Oh, what do you mean? Well, that's when I get up, you know, and, and it, it's just a drag. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. <laughs> yeah, I know, the old bit about turning on the radio, radio. yeah, and listening to the Don Buster... Next, you'll be giving me the old line about how more Americans in Vietnam listen to the Dawn Busters than any other morning program. They do. Every morning. Please the McCoy. A search and rescue mission comes close to finding Si John, even to his gaining visual contact with a rescue helicopter, but fails. Left alone in enemy territory, Captain Si John manages to survive and escape capture for six entire weeks in the unforgiving jungle. He is eventually found unconscious by North Vietnamese troops. After days, he escapes to be recaptured and then tortured. He is taken to the Hanoi Hilton, the main and worst of North Vietnamese prisoner of war camps. Captain Si John dies in the camp after contracting pneumonia. The downing of American pilots over enemy territory is very real in the war in Vietnam, as is the abuse during captivity. It's tough to prepare for something uh, when you don't know how long it's going to last. We'd gone to survival school, SEER school, survival escape, and resistance and evasion. Uh, we'd gone to SEER school, and it's pretty realistic, except we knew in three days we'd be getting out and going back to the club or going back to the base. And uh, so you can't, you can't simulate day after day after day after day after day after day after day not knowing when it's going to end. And um, that was the toughest part. We couldn't train for that. We trained for the torture. We trained for evading questions. We trained, trained for uh, just about everything. We did, they didn't teach us how to communicate covertly, which was... Uh, uh, they do that now, but they didn't do it then. And uh, uh, but the training was okay, uh, but none of us was ever going to get captured. I mean, you think about getting killed, that, that went with the turf back then. Uh, uh, um, being a Navy pilot was the, was the most dangerous job in the world. It was, it was more dangerous than uh, steeplejacks or, or uh, high steel workers. It was, uh, uh, we had a lot of accidents, operational accidents. More men, like C. John, will be taken by the North Vietnamese. These prisoners of war will endure pain beyond the war zone. Almost 300 miles north of Saigon and near the Cambodian and Laos borders, within the Khan Tung province, is the village of Dak To. Special forces camps are established to keep a lookout for North Vietnamese and Viet Cong activity along this strategic point. The unforgiving terrain, with high ridges and even triple canopy rainforests, make helicopter landings practically impossible. This is an advantage that enemy forces will use to their advantage. And they do. North Vietnamese soldiers begin attacking American outposts on a semi-regular basis by the middle of the year. 4th Infantry Division Commander Major General William R. Pierce requests reinforcements to go after the NVA troops. Two battalions arrive on June 17th from the 173rd Airborne Brigade and begin sweeping the area in Operation Greeley. June 20th, 1967. Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 503rd Airborne Infantry stumble across an entire Special Forces unit killed by the North Vietnamese. They continue on, bolstered by Alpha Company. At 0658, the morning of June 21st, Alpha Company is caught in a North Vietnamese ambush. Charlie Company rushes to their aid the best that they can, but are hampered by thick vegetation and the jungle terrain. Alpha Company is on their own. By battle's end, 76 of the 137 are killed with 23 wounded. Only 15 North Vietnamese dead are found on the battlefield. 
More U.S. forces are called into Docto after the decimation of Alpha Company, and they arrive on June 23rd. Sheer numbers and superior firepower, they hope, will defeat the North Vietnamese. A three-day battle begins on August 4th at a hilltop near Doc Seong between a South Vietnamese airborne battalion and a North Vietnamese. The nearby Special Forces camp at Doc Seong also comes under North Vietnamese fire. The 8th Airborne comes in to help defend after the commander and his patrol fails to return. The missing patrol is found dead a kilometer away. The firefight with the North Vietnamese Army is eventually won through superior firepower and air support. In the aftermath, an entire PAVN headquarters is discovered at the top of the mountain where the bloodshed took place. The dwindling down of fighting by August 14th, with the assumption that the North Vietnamese have pulled back, leads to the end of what the U.S. call Operation Greeley. The quiet will not last long. November 3rd, 1967. The defection of a North Vietnamese artillery specialist to South Vietnam reveals the truth about enemy movement in Doc Tho. Months of preparation by the North Vietnamese are discovered, from trenches to bunkers. The communist plan is to divert as many Allied forces as they can to the Central Highlands area. 1,000 U.S. troops are bolstered with an extra 3,500 from the U.S. 173rd Airborne Brigade and 4th Division. They will find themselves outnumbered and facing nearly 6,000 NVA troops. Doc Tho and its airstrip are now fortified, an important base in the Allied cause. Fighting begins when soldiers from the 4th Infantry encounter PAVN defensive positions, and the 173rd do the same the next day. A pattern emerges. U.S. forces encounter North Vietnamese, and the jungle warfare ends with more dead enemy troops than the already significant U.S. losses. But there are still losses. November 12, 1967. North Vietnamese forces begin firing barrages of rockets on the Doc Tho airstrip. Three days later, they destroy two C-130 Hercules transport aircraft on the runway, and the resulting fires and incoming artillery set off a chain reaction of explosions that last throughout the night. Two 40-foot deep craters are left in the wake of a giant mushroom cloud. It is, allegedly, the largest explosion in the Vietnam War. November 19th, 1967. The Battle of Doc Tho is about to come to a head. Intelligence indicates the enemy is positioned on an 875-foot hill a mere six kilometers from the border. The second battalion will take this hill. At 0943 hours, 330 men stand ready to take Hill 875. Charlie and Delta companies advance uphill with two platoons of Alpha Company behind them. Alpha's weapons platoon remain behind to cut a landing zone. The frontal assault is brazen, but hopefully unexpected by the enemy. At 10.30, the paratroopers walk into a barrage of machine gun fire. Then, B-40 rockets and artillery. Hidden in bunkers and trenches, the North Vietnamese are ready. They have been ready the entire time. Even Alpha Company, at the base of the hill, are ambushed by more PAVN troops and forced uphill, sandwiched between North Vietnamese forces. Airstrikes are called in, but fail to have much effect because of the dense foliage. At 1858 hours, a Marine Corps fighter-bomber lets loose a pair of 500-pound bombs. 
One of the bombs detonates in the center of the U.S. forces, killing 42 and wounding 45. Friendly fire incidents such as this would become all too commonplace during the war in Vietnam. Uh, I lost a good buddy that way. Um, he was hit by friendly artillery, and he knew it was going to happen because some of the officers weren't as competent as they should have been. And, uh, and that's what turned out that uh, the wrong coordinates were put in. And uh, now his name's up on the wall. Good friend. Later in the morning, a Cobra rolled on in and fired uh, up the area with his minigun and uh, overran our position. And three of those rounds hit me and it also uh, overran, uh, you know, shot up our OJT uh, crew chief, uh, David Medina, and fatally wounded him. He ended up dying about 10 days later, I think. Three companies head out the next morning to relieve the overwhelmed forces on Hill 875. North Vietnamese fire keeps them from reaching the troops until nightfall. The next day, they advance into close quarters fighting with the North Vietnamese, but not reaching any further than the enemy trenches. The morning after that, more infantry is diverted from another offensive operation in the Central Highlands. Redeployed under the cover of night, they make it to the positions in Dok Tho within 12 hours. Realizing the need to deprive the North Vietnamese of jungle cover, November 23rd is full of airstrikes and artillery designed to denude the hilltop. As the U.S. troops attack Hill 875 in a renewed assault, they find an enemy already retreated. The costs are great. 376 U.S. troops are dead, with another 1,441 wounded. South Vietnamese forces lose 73 soldiers. For the North Vietnamese, they lose approximately 1,000 to 1,400. The Battle of Dok Tho is considered a military victory for American forces, something brought into question when balanced against the great losses. As 1967 ends, there are now 463,000 American troops in South Vietnam. 16,000 are lost in combat to date. Over one million soldiers have moved through the war in Vietnam in one year stints of service. With 90,000 more North Vietnamese troops gaining a foothold in South Vietnam, their army in Vietnam stands at 300,000 men. And so the war in Vietnam continues with the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong's machinations about to come to fruition in 1968. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.